there are various ways how you can send data to Google Analytics 4. One of them is to use the file import, where you prepare a CSV file and import it. That data will then become available in GA4 reports. In this video, I will show you how to use data import in GA4, focusing mainly on the add cost data. And at the end of the video, I will show you where to find that data in reports. To import data, you need to log into your Google Analytics 4 property, then click admin, and then data import. Here you can add multiple data sources depending on what kind of data do you want to import. To create a new data source, click this button, and then you can select what kind of data do you want to import. So one data source is related to one data type. It might be cost data, for example, if you're running ads not only on Google Ads, but also maybe on Facebook, then you can export data from those platforms and import them right here. Then you have item data, user data by user ID, user data by client ID, which basically means that randomly generated ID when Google Analytics is loaded, and also offline event data. There are two ways how you can upload data. You can either manually import CSV file, or you can automate this process with the SFTP option, where basically your developer will need to prepare a particular server, and then you give access to Google Analytics to connect to that server and automatically take the data. In this video, I will be focusing only on the manual CSV upload. So let's say that I want to import data from the Facebook Business Manager, because let's say that I'm running Facebook ads. So I will name this Facebook ads, and then I would need to upload the CSV. But now the question is, where can I get that CSV from? So when it comes to data import to Google Analytics 4, your best friend is the official documentation. I will post a link to this page below the video. So basically, I would highly recommend that you read everything through to better understand. And then here in this section right here, which is metadata, you can see different types of data that you can import. Since we are focusing on the cost data, which is basically cost of the non-Google channels, then you can click this link right here and get more familiar with this type of import. And at the bottom of this page, you will find the template that you can download. So I always recommend downloading a template. And then if you want, you can either edit it in Excel if you have that, or you can import it to Google Sheet and then edit it there. In my case, I will be using Microsoft Excel. So I will just open the CSV file. And here I can expand the fields a bit to make the data more visible. Now, here is the thing. Usually, if you have worked with Google Analytics in the past and you have worked with UTM parameters, then it was usually recommended to use UTM source, UTM medium, and UTM campaign. Now, if you are importing data, and I mean cost data, you will also need to start using UTM ID. If you want to learn more about UTM parameters and you have never done anything with them before, then I will post a link to the description of this video to another tutorial. So watch that first, get familiar with UTM parameters, and then come back to this tutorial. So if you're running Facebook ads and your UTMs look like this, where you have UTM medium, UTM source, and UTM campaign, you will need to first go and update all the UTM parameters of your ads and also include the UTM ID because UTM ID parameter is also required by the cost data import. And here you can enter whatever makes sense to you. It might be some short name of the campaign, might be something like FB, which is Facebook, and then something like that. So once you update the UTMs of all campaigns, then you need to start filling in the CSV file that you have downloaded from the official documentation. So the campaign ID parameter is the UTM ID that you have in the URL. In my case, that was this one. So I will enter it like that. Then source will be Facebook because that is the source that is in the URLs of all my Facebook ads. Then medium is CPC, so that one should remain because that's what I have here. If you have different value, then you will need to enter that different value right here. And then later you will need to fill in these columns right here. So here you need to get the actual data from your other ad platform. In my case, that would be Facebook Business Manager. And you need to fill in the numbers right here. 
And there are different ways how to get that data. And for each platform, the steps would be different. And some solutions are manual, some are more automated. So you will need to investigate that part by yourself. But just to give a quick example, if you go to the Facebook Business Manager, then you could go to Ads Reporting. By the way, keep in mind that Facebook constantly changes the interface. So maybe even in several months, things might look different. So you will need to find a way for yourself. But if you go to ads reporting and then create a new report, then you can select the pivot table and then you can select the metrics that you want to include. For example, campaign name, ad set name. And of course you will need to select metrics such as amount spent, which will be inserted right here in the cost column. Then you have impressions. It will be included in this column and then you should include clicks. So if you cannot find that, then select clicks. And then you can either select clicks all or link clicks, depending on what do you need. You can hover your mouse to learn more what is the difference between all clicks and some link clicks. So let's say that I will be looking at all clicks. And then when you have the data, you can export it, you will get a separate Excel file. And then from that Excel file, you will need to fill in the data in your new CSV file that we have downloaded for this lesson. So let's say that I got the data that we had 3000 impressions here, 2000 here, maybe 5000 here. And then this was the cost. I highly recommend that you always refer to the documentation of the import cost data if you're importing cost data, because otherwise you might find yourself in a situation where something is not working because apparently formatting was not correct. For example, here, the date format is this one, and that's the template that I downloaded from Google. But in reality, the data format should be like this. And if you did not check the documentation, you would not have noticed this issue. And below that, you have an example of how the data should look. So let's say that it cost 1543. And then again, you just copy paste the values from the exported file that you got from Facebook Business Manager or from somewhere else, depending on what kind of data are you importing. So now let's try to fix the date format issue. And also the dates should be updated because let's say that this happened on this particular day, then this happened on the next day, and then this happened on the next day. Now let's format. And here I will select this format like that. Everything looks okay. So now I should save the file and then go back to Google Analytics. So here I am. And now I will click to upload the CSV file. Here is that file. I will select it and open. Now let's go and click next. And now I have to manually map all those fields. So these are required fields. And the campaign ID is the column from my file, I mean the CSV file, that is also called campaign ID because that's the column right here. So campaign ID, then source, medium, campaign name, although, huh, again, interesting thing. I mean, the campaign name is required right here, but it was not included in the template. So we should go back to the file, update it and upload it again. So I will cancel this. Then I will insert a new column in Excel will be named campaign name or just name, for example. And let's check what is the name of the campaign in the URL. In my example, the UTM campaign, which is the campaign name was this one. So I will copy it, paste it right here, and then reuse that name for all the other rows, which are related to the same basically campaign. So now I will save this. Then let's go back to Google Analytics. I will close this, add a new data source. Facebook cost data, cost data right here, manual CSV upload and upload CSV. Then select the file and let's go to the next step. Here I have to map, so campaign ID, source, medium, name, then date, then daily cost. So we will need to click the checkbox here and then tell that we want to include the cost from this column, then clicks from this column and daily impressions from this column. All right, now let's click import. And it might take a while until the data is processed. You're now free to go and do some other work and then you can come back after some time to check the status. If you want to get some tips how to export data from other platforms, then below the link to download the template in the documentation, there is this section that you can expand. And then here are some useful links related to LinkedIn ads, 
Microsoft ads, Twitter ads, where you can export that data and then fill in and prepare that CSV file. Eventually, after a while, you will see that the status should be last imported. If you see some error, then you will need to dig deeper why that error occurred. Maybe some of the data that you imported is not formatted properly. So then you will need to investigate that. If you click on that, you will see the status, you will see the number of data, I mean, the percentage of data that was imported. In this case, I'm working with a test property, so I don't have any data with those UTM parameters and that particular UTM campaign. That's why match rate is zero. But in your case, it should be something larger than zero, depending on what kind of data are you importing. If you plan to import cost data from multiple platforms, not only Facebook, but maybe Microsoft ads, then you need to keep in mind that only one data source is allowed for cost data. So in that case, you should probably rename this data source from Facebook cost data to something more generic, such as ad cost data or non Google ad cost data. Oh, okay, dash is not allowed. So you can name it like that and then click save. So what does it mean is that you will need to list all your paid advertising UTM parameters and their impressions and all the other stuff in the same file. Anyway, let's say that you have imported this file, the data has been processed. Now a couple of months have passed and you want to import some additional data because you have accumulated more data in the last two months. So to do that, you will need to make sure that you still have the same file from the past. For example, let's say that this is the one that I imported two months ago. Now I want to add additional rows. So then you will need to fill in those rows right here with that new data, save the file, and then import again to that very same existing data source. So to do that, once you have updated that file, you will need to go back to Google Analytics 4, data import, and not click the create data source, but click the existing one for the cost data, and then click import, select a new file, and then that data will be eventually imported as well. Just make sure that the structure of the CSV file remains the same, meaning that these parameters must go exactly in this order, their names must remain the same, and so on. According to the documentation of Google Analytics 4, it can take up to 24 hours for the analytics to start displaying that cost data as well. And also, this is an important thing you need to keep in mind, it's that users have to engage with that campaign after you upload the data so that Google Analytics would fetch the information from the imported data file. Now let's take a look at where can you find later that data related to data import. So the first place that comes to my mind is the explorations. So you can go to explore, then you select freeform or blank, and then you can select dimensions and metrics. Since we are talking about ad cost data, this means that the report should be using dimensions related to traffic sources, such as session source medium, for example, like that. So I will include this. And then in the metrics, I will include or actually I can even probably include the campaign, I mean, the session campaign like that. And then in the metrics, you can click plus and include metrics that start with non Google like that. If you see them disabled, it means that some of your dimensions selected in the report are incompatible with the metrics. So remove various dimensions, leave just session dimensions, and then these should become enabled. And then you can include like this, 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 and so on. Now you can include them. And you can add some of the metrics as well like that. I was just double clicking at them right here and they are now added to the report as well. It might take a while for the report to load because I've noticed that when I'm working with the imported data, it takes more time. So unfortunately, right now, I don't have any numbers right here because again, this is a test property. So I didn't have any campaigns where I had UTM ID parameter. So obviously these are zeros. But in your case, you will see that some of the sources mediums or campaigns, they will have some numbers, depending on what have you imported in Google Analytics from that CSV file. Another place where you can find that cost data is in the advertising section, performance, all channels, and then you can switch to let's say campaign, and then you will see that some campaigns will have ads cost. So this is coming from places like Google Ads integration, but also from the imported data that you imported with that CSV file. 
And that is how you can import cause data to Google Analytics 4. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.